Welcome to this video. This video starts a bit different because as the title says, we want to have a look at git rebase and git merge and see how these two commands work and how we can use them. The problem is that these commands, well, can be applied in a lot of different situations and have pros and cons and so on. And actually, I just wanted to give you a quick example how you could use both of these. For that, we'll have a look at our quick example project now in the intro and then continue with the actual code. Because in this video, we'll start with the following situation. We'll have a master branch right here with two commits, m1, m2, master commit one, master commit two, doesn't matter a lot in the end how we name them. The important thing is that this example project will also come with a feature branch. This feature branch is created based on the master branch, so based on this last commit in the master branch basically. And we implemented some stuff in there. So we're working on a new feature, which shouldn't be implemented into our master branch immediately. At the same time, our master branch is also evolving. Our colleagues are working on it, whatever. The important thing is that we also got a new commit right here. So the situation is this one. We started at this second commit and now both branches evolved. After that, we want to continue with our feature branch and finish our feature. Well, and then the question is, how can we combine these developments, the M3 commit, so the latest commit in our master and the latest commit in our feature branch into or back into our master branch right here, this thing right here. Well, for that, we have a lot of different approaches. And in this video, I want to show you two ways how to achieve this. One way with git merge, the other way with git rebase. So that was some theory. Let's have a look at the code now. Right here, I am in the project. And if we have a look at git branch down here in the terminal in my integrated terminal, you can see that we have exactly the same structure that we saw on the slide. We have two branches, master and feature. And if I have a look at the commits in my master branch, you can see that I have three commits. The third one, the second one, and the first commit, M1. Let's now check out the other branch, the feature branch right here, like this, and also see what's in there. And as you can see, we have F1, so the first commit in the feature branch, and important, this M2 commit right here, which is the last commit both branches have in common, the M2 commit. We also have the M1 commit down there. By the way, don't worry too much about the actual content up here. It's just some dummy code. As you can see in the feature file right here, we have F1, so basically the name of our commit in the feature branch. And if I switch back to the master branch, once again, we can close this one, you can see we have M1, M2, M3. So basically the code is equal to the name of the commits. The important thing now is that I want to continue my work in the feature branch. As you saw it, we want to create this second commit in there. And then I want to kind of combine the information of both commits in my master branch. For that, I'll check out the feature branch down here like that. And now I will add another feature. Let's say I'm writing some really awesome code, uh, maybe something like F2 right here. So now I'm done and my feature is great and all that stuff. So I will add it and of course commit it right here. By the way, if you're not sure about what we're doing right here, have a look at this video. I think it's up here because there we dive into the basics of Git. Just a side note, back to this commit, which I will name to follow the naming convention F2 now. So just to be sure, if we have a look at the commits in our feature branch, we have F2, F1 and M2. Now, switching to the master and entering git log once again will show us, well, we know it already, that the master has this M3 commit as the latest commit. So what we can do now is we can simply enter git merge and keep in mind we are in the master branch now. So we basically tell git now, which branch we want to merge with our master branch or in our master branch basically. And this branch is the feature branch like that. And now don't hit enter please. Because if you hit enter, this wouldn't be a problem. You would create a merge branch and you would have one last commit which combines all the changes of both branches, of the latest commits of both branches. 
but you would also merge all the other commits of your feature branch into your master branch. This is not necessarily a problem. This is actually quite nice because Git is a tool which allows us to track how our project evolves. So what different commits we had, which features we implemented, which features we kind of corrected afterwards and so on. So if you want that, just enter git merge feature here and this will be fine. But I want to achieve something different. As you saw on the slide, this slide right here, I want to have a structure which is kind of like this. So our free commits in the master. And after that, I want to have kind of the updated information of the feature branch. And because of that, I will not use git merge right here, but git merge dash dash squash feature, so the name of the other branch. Because squash simply allows us to kind of summarize all the different commits, so all the changes we had in the feature branch in the last commit, so it kind of puts them together, and then merges this last commit with the latest commit in the master branch. That sounds kind of complicated, but if I now simply hit enter, then you can see, well, the automatic merge went well, sounds good, but it stopped before committing as requested. Now, this sounds like a big problem, but the actual solution is that you simply enter git commit minus m, and now the name of this new, of this merge commit, which could be feature and master merged. Again, not the most awesome naming convention here, but if we hit enter and maybe clear this, and now have a look at our git log, well, not our git lot, our git log would be better here, then you can see that the latest commit, so the head in our master right here, indeed is our feature and master merge commit. And if I go down, you can see that before this commit, we have the m3 commit, the m2 commit, and the m1 commit. And if we look at the actual code now in our project, you can see that the index.html file right here has m1, m2, and m3. This is nice. And if we go to the feature folder right here, you can see that we have our two commits that we created in the feature branch. So this is working nice actually. We only have this one commit right here. But you could say, well, I don't like this. Because wouldn't it be nicer if I would have the same structure, so M3 and then my changes of the feature branch, but if I would see these two changes right here. So if F1 and F2, we also have a single commits in our feature branch, would be this play right here, which would allow me to kind of better track the changes I made and so on. And there is a way to do this. And for that, we can use git rebase now. So it's time to kind of rewind the project a bit. So here we are back in our project, kind of rewind it as I said. And if we look at git branch once again, you can see we have the two branches. We are currently in the master branch. And if I now enter git log right here, you can see that again, our latest commit in the master branch is this m3 commit. And if I quit this and quickly check out our feature branch right here and log the, oh, maybe clear it first and then log the information, you can see that we have the first commit, so we only have F1, no F2 at the moment, and the feature branch is again based on M2. So we are again in the same position we were at the beginning of the first part of this video when we talked about git merge. Let's clear that again. The thing now is that I want to use the rebase command right now. And rebase works a bit different than git merge. And instead of talking about rebase, I just want to apply it now. But keep in mind, let me log in once again, if I enter git log right here, that our structure in the feature branch is this one. So m2, second commit of the master branch, and then first commit in the feature branch. So I am in the feature branch, and now I enter git rebase, and now master. That's the other branch, right? Because the master is the branch which has an additional commit. And this third commit now should now basically be the base for our feature branch. Now let's hit enter and see what happens. If I do this, something seems to be going on right here. This is good. And if I now clear this once again and now enter git log, we see F1, nothing new. But right here, 
we now see that the third commit kind of magically came into our commits right here in our feature branch. That's important. If I enter git branch once again, like this, you can see we are in the feature branch. I'm not in the master branch. And if I switch to the master branch right here and log it, you can see that nothing changed in here. We only have these three commits. Let's go back to the feature branch. And let me now tell you what happened here. Because actually, it's quite simple. We were in the feature branch and we entered git rebase master. So the first thing git does is git checks both branches and has a look at the last commit both branches have in common. And which commit was that? This was our M2 commit, the commit we used to create our feature branch initially. Then git has a look at our current branch. Remember, we are in the feature branch. So git looks at this feature branch and see what changed actually in this feature branch. Now and git finds all these changes and then kind of saves these changes internally for the moment. So nothing is committed or something like that, it's just saved internally. Then git goes back to the master and sees what happened to the master, so how the master evolved. And what does git see right here? It sees that master got an additional commit, the m3 commit. Now git uses this m3 commit and also kind of moves the feature branch forward to this m3 commit. So the feature branch is no longer based on the m2 commit, but on the m3 commit. And then both branches are aligned again. Then git simply applies this internally saved information, so our f1 change, this change right here, and puts it on top of this m3 commit. That's basically everything that's happening. And why is this cool in our case? Well, because now I can simply go right here and enter another thing in my project. Let's say this is now the finished code. And if I now say git add like that and git commit minus m f2 like that, then we can clear this once again and lock the information. And as we can see, we have m3, f1 and f2. So this is kind of nice. And now we can switch back to our master, clear it. And well, if you listen carefully, then you probably can guess what we can do right now to finally also add the changes to our master. Because remember, that's the current status of our master branch. So we have m1, m2 and m3 as the latest commit. And in our feature branch, we actually have the same situation. The latest commit both branches have in common is this m3 commit. That's what we just achieved with our rebase command. So if I enter here, git rebase, but now not master because we are in the master at the moment, but feature, what will happen then is that git will again first have a look at our two branches and see what is the last commit both branches have in common. In our case, this is the m3 commit now. Then git will analyze our master branch and see what changed. Well, actually nothing. So there is nothing git has to save internally. Then git will go to the feature branch and see what changed right there. Well, and what it finds there is that we added two commits, f1 and f2. Then it will apply these changes to our master branch. And after that, it would add the changes we applied to the master. And as there are no changes, well, basically our master should now simply have the m1, the m2, the m3, and the f1 and the f2 commit. Let's see if this is correct by hitting enter now. And by entering, well, maybe clear and then git log once again. And as you can see, we have f2 right here on top. We have f1, m3, m2, and m1. And important, up here, we have the common head of our master and of our feature branch. So these were two examples how you can use git merge and git rebase. As you can see, both commands work quite differently. Merge kind of, well, combines the information into one single commit at the end, if you use this squash command we use. Whereas git rebase, well, simply, as the name says, changes the base of your code. 
as we saw it in the feature branch, we suddenly didn't start after the M2 commit anymore, but after the M3 commit. This also brings us to kind of one of the disadvantages of this rebase command. You should never use rebase in public repositories. Using them locally on your machine normally should be fine, so if you work on your own projects. But in bigger teams, you can use it, but it can cause serious damage in the end and a lot of work for your colleagues. I won't dive into all the details about that right now, but if you look at the official Git documentation right here, you can see this sentence right here. Do not rebase commits that exist outside your repository. Now I won't dive into this deeper in this video as it's meant to be an introduction to show you the general capabilities of git merge and git rebase. But if you want to use it together with your colleagues in public repositories, then make sure to have a look at this article because otherwise this could cause some problems. Nevertheless, I think it's good to know git merge and git rebase. And with that, I hope you learned something interesting for you. And I also hope to see you in the next video or one of the other videos here on the channel or on academine.com. Bye.